St. Richard's Episcopal of Winter Park's online offering of morning prayer. Today, like always, we will be using Rite 2 of the morning prayer office out of the Book of Common Prayer, and we will start on page 77 today. But before actually starting the prayer service, let's recognize that today is the day to honor Sarah Josepha Buell Hale. Now, if that name Hale remind, remind you of anybody, she's noted for being an author, an editor, and the prayer book calls her a prophetic witness. She's the one who negotiated and pressed Abraham Lincoln to start the National Day of Thanksgiving that became Thanksgiving Day. She was a person who worked to turn Mount Vernon, you know, where George Washington's home, and Bunker Hill into national sites to remember our history. And she was noteworthy in being a woman who wrote to help women's issues and women's freedom. Sarah Hale. Now let's turn to page 77. This morning, as part of our morning prayer service, I'm, let me list ahead of time the things we're going to do. We're going to do Canticle 13 when we get to the scripture. That'll be on page 90, and we're going to do Canticle 18. We're going to do a, a special prayer given the time of, that the nation and the world is going through. It's, it's for, for quiet confidence. It's prayer number 59 on page 832. The lectionary for morning prayer today calls for the reading of the following scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, 24 to 2, 7. And the gospel reading is Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11. Let's begin. On page 77, we read first from the sentences of scripture. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Now let's turn ahead to page 80 and the invitatory and psalm. Today's psalm will be Psalm 37. You can find it in the back of your prayer book on page 633. And it's a long psalm, so we're going to be doing part one. Psalm 37. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. And then over on page 81. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. And then turning up ahead to page 83, Christ our Passover, while we're allowed to do it, we do this in unison. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as an Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Now let's turn to our psalm, page 633, Psalm 37. And we will do it antiphonally, back and forth between the odd and even verses. Michelle, would you read the first? Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass, fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. 
Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is will, now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will turn to the reading of the scripture lessons for today's morning prayer. The first reading is Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 24 and going all the way up to chapter 2, verse 7. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Here ends the reading. For our first canticle, turn to page 90 in the Book of Common Prayer, number 13, A Song of Praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 4, the first 11 verses. This is a familiar story. This is the story of Jesus in the wilderness. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, 
If you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited upon him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle will be on page 93. A song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. In looking at our readings today, there's a number of themes that pop out. In Colossians, more than once, the apostle references to Christ being the mystery. And then in that earlier part of the reading, Christ in you, namely the Gentiles, is the mystery of God, long hidden. I, I like to think of that verse when I go to receive the Eucharist, but switch it around. Then it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And as we take Christ in, he becomes part of us. The other thing that jumped off the page when I was listening to the text being read is how Paul says, although I'm not with you in body, I'm with you in spirit. That describes what's happening with our live streaming of our services and morning prayer. It isn't just the idea that we have to be present in body. We can be together in spirit. Now, turning to the gospel. The testing story of Jesus in the wilderness by the great tester involves a key question. Whether Jesus will act on his own whims, his own will, or if he will do what the Father asks. It's, it's really unusual that a first-year Greek student would know that for the two te first two tests, or temptations as they're normally called, when you use the word if, if hardly does justice to the way the grammar works there. If you're going to use the word if, you have to have a long phrase in parenthesis. If it is a fact, that you are, and you are, the Son of God, then do this thing. The easier way to render it is simply say, since. So the, to take it that way, what the test is, since you are the Son of God, do this for yourself. And in, both, in all three cases, Jesus does not act on his own. He doesn't do anything for his own whim, but he emphasizes following God and his scripture. Probably a good lesson for us all. Amen. Amen. The next thing in our morning prayer service is to turn to the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 96. And we do this in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Then turning to page 97 for the prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. And let's use the one on the right hand call. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And then we choose one of two suffrages. Let's go with A today. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The colic written in honor of Sarah Hale reads, let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your name for the vision and witness of Sarah Hale, whose advocacy for the ministry of women helped to support the deaconess movement. Make us grateful for your many blessings that we may come closer to Christ in our own families through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then let's, let's do the prayer, usually for Thursday on page 100, the collect for guidance, and let's all do this. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, in, in, in light of the tragedy and the crisis that our nation and the world are facing, a special prayer for God's intervention. This, is come, this comes from page 832 in the prayer book. It's number 59, titled For Quiet Confidence. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of thy spirit lift us, we pray thee, to thy presence, where we may be still and know that thou art God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The next thing that happens in the morning prayer service is a selection from the mission prayers. Those are the two at the bottom of 100 and the one at the top of, of 101. Go ahead. That one. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now is when you think or express thanksgivings and supplications. And as we all know, we think of the world and we think of our own country facing the crisis of this epidemic. We think of those families who have lost loved ones and the dread that they're having and the sense of loss that they couldn't even be with their loved ones. Lord, give them peace and give our leaders wisdom that they may make wise actions in treating this epidemic and thinking about what to do with the economy. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
turning ahead to page 102 in unison, let's do the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, and may God be with you the rest of the day.